Okay, one last piece and we're kind of done with exception handling. I'm going to move on now to demo number five. And here, demo number five has got a weird situation. I've got the same code as before. I'm calling this method. And you can see that this method now, you see all the dangerous stuff is happening in here, right? I'm creating the scanner. I'm asking the user to enter information. If anything bad happens, it's going to happen here. It's not going to happen there. But strangely, the try catch is up here instead of down here. And instead, what's happening here is that it's got this weird sort of thing we've never seen before that's attached to the end of the header, the method header. And this now th notice that before, let me just show you here. When we were looking at this other thing, we had this keyword called throw. See, I was manually throwing the exception. Now, don't get confused. What we have over here is a different keyword. This time, the keyword is throws. It's a warning. This method is trying to warn somebody about something. What do you think the method is trying to? So this little addition, this addendum to the method header, it's warning somebody about something. Who is it warning and what is the warning? That's my question for you. OK, it's warning the caller, whoever the caller happens to be. In this case, happens to be the main method. It could be any method. It says, hey, I do some naughty stuff. And these are the two naughty things that I do. So you have to handle it. You have to handle it. If you don't handle it, the compiler will complain. So now my question to you is, why would this method that is actually the, the source of the danger want to pass the buck and make the caller handle the error? It turns out there are two really good reasons for this. See if you and your partner can discuss what they might be. You may need to do some thinking. I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to give you a hint. This method might be in a library of some kind, like some kind of Java library. Why would we want the calling method to handle the error instead of the method where the error actually occurs? That's my question for you. This method has the right to pass the buck to the parent method, the calling method, and say, hey, I do these error things sometimes, you handle it. What do you think would be a good reason for that? It's actually slightly different from that, the main reason. Imagine this is a library method, okay? So imagine that this method is called in I use it in my, my code, you use it in your code, your friend uses it in their code. This is a library method. Why might the library method not be a good place to handle the exception? The library doesn't know how to respond to the error. Maybe for me, it's a very minor error. I can just ignore it and keep going. But for you, calling the same method, it might be a colossal error and you need to shut the program down. The library method doesn't want to dictate what the reaction to the error should be. So by passing the buck to the calling method, it's giving you the flexibility to decide, hey, what do you want to do if this error occurs? So right here, you can see that I have decided to shut the program down because I've decided that this is a colossal error. If you call the same method, you might have a different try-catch sequence where you might just ignore the error and move on. So this is important. So that's one important reason why this throws is important. The other important reason, which is not as good a reason, is that sometimes, for example, when you're in the middle of writing a large bunch of code and you don't want to be bothered with the exceptions, you can do this throws business right away. And a common place that you do this is right in the main method itself. Let me just show you that. Um, let's say over here, for example, that you didn't want to deal with these file errors. It's like, I just don't want to deal with them. So what you can do is you can just go like this, and now you don't have to do all this try-catch business anymore. You can just go like this now, and you can just go like this now. You can just go scanner, uh, scan equals new scanner F like that. And you can see now it's not going to complain anymore. So I'm telling the calling method here that I might do something bad. But here, the method that's being called is main. What, what's the calling method? Who's calling main? It's past the buck to the calling method, right? Where is the calling method? Main is the method being called. Who's calling it? Sort of. The user is calling it through the computer. Here, the calling method is the operating system itself. So either Windows or Mac OS or Linux or whatever it is. So basically what you're saying here is that the operating system has to handle the error. You're passing the buck. It's not, it's, this is considered a bad programming practice. This is the right thing to do if you're in a coding competition though, 
and your time is of the essence and you don't want to write a lot of error handling, you can just do this. You can also do this if you plan to write the error handling later, but you want to write the rest of the code now and you don't want to be bothered by the exceptions, you can basically temporarily turn them off by putting this in there and then get to the exception handling later. So that would be a way to sort of delay the uh, delay writing the code. 